Welcome boys and girls, something a bit different this week. This week we are looking at the EcoFlow Delta Power Station. Is it a power station? I'm going to call it a power station. If you're new to the channel, thanks for dropping by. Tools and Stuff is normally a tool review channel, but this week we are going to check out something a bit different, but we're still going to show how it relates to power tools. You will have noticed something up in the top corner up here when the video started. That's because EcoFlow sent this to me for free to review. Now, I get offers for reviews probably two or three a day from all sorts of companies around the world. And 99.9% .9 of the time I turn them down. But I thought this one was something you guys might be interested in. Because what happens when you need to charge a tool battery, for instance, and there's no power? Or let's say you are staying somewhere that is off-grid and you need to run a fridge, keep your beer cool. Or you need to watch whatever the latest Netflix hit series is. Well, you may need one of these things to power everything. So what exactly does it do? This is essentially a giant battery with regulation built into it so that it can run your appliances. If we turn it on, you will see that it is fully charged and it has 99 hours of runtime in whatever we are running at the moment which is nothing so we have an input and an output on the top here so input only lights up when you've got it plugged into a power source to charge it up now by power source that power source can be ac from your home power source or you can charge it from your car as you're driving to your destination or you can hook it up to a solar panel so whatever one of those you have, the input watts coming into it are going to be at the top there. The number underneath is the output. Sorry, I had to switch locations there because it's a bit hard to see the screen, isn't it? There's too much light. It's um, very easy to see with the eyeballs, but not so much with the camera. Anyway, so the input, like I was saying, at the top, the output is going to be whatever you've got plugged into this thing. So it will run up to 1800 watts constantly. That's the output of this particular device or 3300 peak load so when you put something in it might spike when a refrigerator turns on for instance it might spike and you might get over that 1800 that's okay as long as it doesn't go over 3300 so 1800 watts will power a lot of household appliances but it won't power really powerful heaters electric jugs things that have heating elements in them not so good for something like this it will however run most heaters on lower settings microwaves, fridges, computers, laptops, televisions, most things that don't have heating elements in them. Screen has timed out. After a few minutes of not using it, the screen will time out. Just tap the on off switch and it will pop back on again. It has four cooling fans built into it and there's a panel on the back here to plug in your AC power and your, your car charger or your solar panels. On the opposite end from the control panel you have the AC outlets so there's four of them as you can see here and also a car cigarette lighter style outlet yep believe it or not children they used to be for cigarette lighters now this is an Australian slash New Zealand model so it's 240 volts coming out of here at a maximum of 1800 watts across the four outlets so don't go putting 1100 in that one and 1100 in that one because you'll be over Unfortunately, with the way they've orientated them, if you've got big plugs that um, have like transformers built into them, they tend to, if you plug one in there, it crosses over the top of that one. So it's a bit annoying in that regard. If you're in the States, this would of course be a 110 volt system, and so it's going to have different watt outputs and stuff, different currents, you know. This is a 1260 watt hour battery, essentially, at 50.4 volts, I think. Um, so that's the equivalent of four of those plus a six amp hour one of those as well as this base unit though you can get external batteries which are sort of about the same size but don't have all the paraphernalia or the controls and everything you hook them up sort of in series and you can have a power station with a lot greater capacity if we go back round to the front of the unit we have four USB ports two sort of standard ones two fast ones and two USB-C there is now someone operating a digger nearby, so apologies if there's an annoying sound in the background. These days a lot of tool companies are making their own sort of power stations like this, 
where you would hook the batteries on the side, chuck on like about four batteries, and then you can power your corded tools. Well with this, you don't have to worry about wasting your tool batteries, because presumably if there's no power and you're using all your tool batteries to run corded tools, you're gonna run out of your tool batteries. And then you're not gonna be able to power your drills and all your basic stuff. So this is a good alternative to wasting your power tool batteries. And the great thing about this is you can charge your power tool batteries from it too. And that's what we're gonna do right now. Although I might have to set this up somewhere else a bit quieter and away from all the annoying light for the control panel. Because it's a little hard to see out here, isn't it? Oh, get on the right angle, it's okay. So you're on a site with no power, but you need to keep your batteries charged. You need to keep the job ticking over. No way of charging your batteries if you don't have power. So we're going to fill up all these charges with batteries, and we're going to use this thing to charge them up. See how long it takes, see how much power it uses, see how many charges we would get out of this unit. Weight-wise, it is the equivalent of about 7 of these, around the 14 kg mark. Hopefully you can see the display panel okay here. I want to keep this outside because it's such a beautiful day, but it's just tricky keeping it out of the sun and everything. But the display panel will turn off anyway after a few minutes. It doesn't stay on, so it's not wasting battery power while you're charging up items or running your appliances. So I have four battery chargers plugged into it right now. I'm going to turn on the AC power at the back. It just has a small button to turn all those sockets on. Right, the chargers are now all running. I haven't got any batteries on them yet, but we're using around 14, 15 watts just to run all the all the blinking lights that are on those four chargers. Now I'm going to stick on batteries one by one and we're going to see how much difference this makes and how many watts all these chargers are drawing. I'm going to start with a 2 amp hour 12 volt Makita battery. Look, climbing up now. This number on the left is now displaying how many hours you can run at that amount of watts. So we could charge this battery for around the 16, 17 hour mark. Let's now chuck on a 5 amp hour 40 volt. When you first put a battery on a Makita charger, it checks it first, makes sure it's safe and everything, makes sure it's the right temperature before it starts charging, and when it starts charging, you notice because the watts all of a sudden jump up. Okay, we're going to make sure this number doesn't go over 1800 at any point. I'm now going to chuck on a couple of 5 amp power 18 volt batteries. Around the 700 watt mark now, and now for two of these big boys, the 8 amp hour 40 volts. As you can see, it takes a while before the Makita chargers actually get up to their full potential. They just slowly start off and then ramp it up just dropped our first percent of battery power from the unit. So my makeshift charging station now running at around the 1130 watt. So because this is a 1260 watt hour unit, if, we, if all of these added up to 1260 watts, then it would run for one hour. Running at what it's doing right now, we should basically just get all of these charged. It takes about an hour and 20 minutes to do the one at the back. We've only got just over an hour from the battery charging this many things at once. All right, I'll come back in about half an hour and see how we go. The 12 volt battery is charged. We've got about 42 minutes left running and we have 65% of the battery left. The EcoFlow is now down to 50% capacity. 18 volt batteries are nearly charged. Watch this number drop when the two 18 volt batteries kick off. Five amp hour 40 volts almost charged as well. And we're getting a bit of a a drop now down to around 800 watts. So with the 12 volt and 18 volts now charged, got a bit more time coming back. We've got 600 watts going out at the moment to charge the 40 volt batteries. 5 amp hour though is almost done. Just the two 8 amp hour 40 volt batteries left charging now. 
and as long as they charge within 39 minutes we'll be all good where are we up to uh oh 14 minutes left 12 percent battery will they be charged in time So both of those batteries, as you just heard, are finished charging. So that's all our batteries charged now. We've got 7% battery life left. Not much. I might just flatten this thing right down now, eh? And we'll see how long it takes to charge up 1260 watt hours, 50.4 volts. Shall I tell you right now about how it starts off slow, charging slowly to not damage the battery and then ramps up and then slows down towards the end? Well, I guess you'll see that when I plug it in. Now, if the EcoFlow unit had 1260 watt hours of power to begin with, and we've got 7% left, that's about 88 watt hours. So, in theory, all of these should add up to around 1172 watt hours, correct? Let's um, add those up. All these batteries add up to 958. Ah, oh, so we've lost some watt hours somewhere. Where did we lose them? Well, all of these chargers, of course, have all got fans and things going in them, so they're all using their own power as well. It's not just going directly straight into a battery cell. So we lost probably, what, about 15% in all the chargers, fans and lights and flashy things. But we've now got a heap of batteries to keep us going for the rest of the day while we're working. Okay, to finish the EcoFlow off, that last 7%, I have a 5 amp hour 18 volt battery here to charge, which is 90 watt hours. And there's about 88 watt hours left in this. Uh oh, it's not going to make it. What is going to happen when this runs out of battery? Well, we're about to find out. So it's starting around the one, well, it's fluctuating between about 160 and 180. And then once the battery's got a little bit of charge in it, it will ramp up again, presumably. And this will go down rather quick. This battery would normally take around 45 minutes to charge. And it's saying we've only got 28 minutes of charge time. So we're in trouble. Our battery has just clicked over to the third bar, but we've only got nine minutes left. This could be problematic. Will this die to the point that the screen disappears? Or will it leave something in the tank so that you can see the screen and know what's going on? You're about to find out. Eighty percent light hasn't come on yet, but the watts going out have slowed down as the battery is nearly charged. The green light is on, we are at eighty percent and the watts going out has dropped. We might just get this battery charged. Oh no, our battery actually got fully charged before this thing ran out. Ah should have put a 40 volt back on. Oh, I think I do have another battery that could be charged so we can flatten this thing finally. It's getting harder and harder to find somewhere where I'm not getting a reflection on this damn thing. Anyway, we've got the 40 volt dual charger hooked up. I'm going to chuck a battery on, see if we can finally flatten this thing. This last percent is just hanging in there, man. Oh, it's down to zero percent. Come on, yes. Two minutes, die. Die! <laughs> now I know a lot of you are going to be yelling at the screen. It's not good to run a battery right down like this. This runs on lithium ion battery. There it is. It's just cocked it. She is dead. Turn it back on. Will it kick into the... No, right. We need to charge her up now. So, I'm going to take that somewhere with better lighting, i.e. indoors. And we're going to charge it because... Although you can charge this with a solar panel, they never sent a solar panel to charge it up when they sent me this unit. I don't have my own solar panels to charge it up. Nothing strong enough anyway, and so we're going to have to do it the old-fashioned way, with one of them sockets in the wall. OK, 
Okay, I haven't turned the power on to charge up the unit yet, but it's ready to go. Let's flick it on. It's now going to kick into charge mode. The little input spinning thing here, letting you know there is power coming in. Fans have kicked on. And you'll now see this number rise. It'll start off fairly low. Once the, I'm not sure what percentage it is, I've, done, I've charged it a few times, but I haven't seen what exact percentage it changes at. But it'll get up to 1200 watts input max. I mean, at 1260, it should take one hour, right? But it'll start off slow so as not to overheat and damage the battery. Once it's in the middle ranges, it'll ramp up. Once it gets down to about 20% left, it'll slow back down again. So anyway, I'm going to set a timer on my phone and we're going to see just how long this takes. So we will keep track of that. I think probably once it gets over about 5% it'll speed up. Because at its current rate it's going to take 9 hours which is way too slow for something like this. You want it done a bit quicker than that. So we're up to the 1000 watts going into it now at 7%. So we are at 29% and we are just over 25 minutes. 30% now. So at that rate, are we looking at about an hour and a half? So we're now at 60%. It's saying it's got about 33 minutes left. It is currently on 44 minutes. So what's that make it? 77 minutes. An hour and 17 minutes. Let's see if that's what we end up with. So you can now see we're at 83% and we've got around 27, 28 minutes left. The watts going in has dropped to 700 from about 1100 peak that I saw. And we are one hour and six minutes in. Meaning, in 11 minutes from the last time we checked, we should have been full. But we've still got 27 minutes left to go. That's because we have slowed down with the input coming in. So it's going to be a lot longer than an hour and 17 minutes. 94%, 10 minutes left to go, we are 5 minutes past our, 5 or 6, maybe 7 almost, minutes past our 1 hour 17 minute earlier estimation. We're running at 727 watts input at the moment. I'm guessing that's going to drop even lower once we get over 95%, so it wouldn't surprise me if that 9 minutes is still wrong. If it is correct, we're looking at about 1 hour and 33 minutes. Oh, one minute to go. Says it's on 100%. Let's take a look at the time. 1 hour 34. Which was about our last estimate, wasn't it? So, nearly there. What I've noticed though, is that last one minute sits there for a long, long time. So, I'll come back in another five minutes and see if it's still one minute. See the input just slowly dropping, sort of about one watt every second or so. Right, I don't know what cut out first then, whether this stopped charging or whether the battery on my camera conked up. Not quite sure, but it does mean I can now charge the battery on my camera with this. So if you're on holiday trying to get away from work and you need to charge up computers and what have you because you're an idiot and instead of just relaxing, oh, rooster, you are um, checking emails and filming things for YouTube or something like that, then never fear, you can charge your camera batteries, you can run your laptop all from this device. I can't believe that. All day, no rooster, and now rooster, as soon as I push record again. <sighs> anyway, as you can see, plenty of hours, so we're between 30 and 40 odd hours of battery charging and laptop charging, so gonna keep things running for quite some time. But well, what happens if you're watching TV and the power goes off? Now let's say you don't have a reliable power supply, but you want to watch the latest conspiracy theory nonsense on Netflix. Well, the EcoFlow can help you out with that. I'm putting this bit in here so that I can weed out people from the comment section and, and not have to bother with them ever again. So the power now is coming out of the wall. 
going into the eco flow and then go from the eco flow into Graham Hancock. Now, what happens if I turn off the power? Because at the moment, basically the battery isn't working. It's bypassing the battery and going straight into the TV. But if I flick off the power and simulate a blackout, it will, within 30 milliseconds, according to EcoFlow, kick over into the battery and the TV should be all good. Let's see if that's what happens. If this doesn't work, Mr. Hancock, I'm sorry, but here we go. Oh. Didn't work. Okay, so the TV is flashing, it's turning back on. So it's now running on power. I mean, sorry. It's now running on the battery. It doesn't use much power. So the TV running on the EcoFlow yet yeah, not quick enough to kick over to actually keep it running. So you can't use this if you are, uh, let me just turn this down a bit. You can't use this if you are running computer equipment, sensitive equipment that like a data server or something like that. You, you know, you're gonna lose power and that could disrupt a lot of things. So bear that in mind. It will kick in, but it will take a few, well, 30 milliseconds supposedly, which is clearly too long for this television. But it'll be okay for something like a refrigerator, for instance. Let's just see how much power it is using. Take a look down here, zoom me on in. We're only running at like 38 watts. So it'll run this television for 36 hours. So that's pretty good in an emergency situation if you need to keep track of what's going on. That'll keep you informed for a long time. Because it's using so little power, if you listen carefully, or if you listen carefully, you hear ducks outside, but there's no fans running because it's, it's using so little power that there's no need for the fans. So that's pretty good. I like that. You can run the TV. It's nice and quiet. and it'll keep it going for a long time. If you're a fan of unboxing experiences, it does come in a rather sleek, nice looking box. Inside the box, it comes in this bag. Thankfully, my bag is a little bit dirty because as I was carrying this down in the box to film at the off-grid location I was at, um, the box fell to bits on me. And the unit inside that bag went tumbling down the hill and over the edge of a uh, retaining wall and nearly took out a beehive. Um, so it had two drops of around the one meter to 1.2 meters or around the sort of four foot or so mark. So I know it can take a bit of an impact. Was onto soft grass, thankfully. The box was not glued very well down the sides. Unfortunately, the bag is made of, well, I don't know what it's made of. It's like a... It feels really weird. <laughs> it's it's a nice fabric, whatever it is. It's like a like a matte finish, nylon, suede sort of effect. Anyway, it goes in there like so to get it in and out a bit easier. There's a zip on the side. Bam! Got it hooked up to a steam mop at the moment using 1430 watts. Fans have kicked in. Fans are quite loud. I don't that next year won't try to sleep. Might not be too good for a CPAP machine. Steam that floor up. Over the past few weeks I've primarily been using this in my new shed because there's no power out there so I've been using this for lighting and for music and for charging my laptop and things such as that. And as you can see it's getting close to needing another charge. It's been a very handy thing to have around and I wish I'd had it for all the flooding and disasters that we had um, a couple of months ago here where we lost power and well most of Auckland lost power at some point and uh, my mother would have loved this rather than me having to uh, 
pull apart a petrol generator in the middle of it all that she brought around that she couldn't get going. So I did get it going, so that was at least something. But of course that has to sit outside, so to power her fridge she had this noisy great generator going that you don't want going all night. This would have been absolutely ideal and I think I might see if I can get some solar panels for this and maybe leave it permanently in my shed with a couple of solar panels up on the roof see how that sort of goes and I've got a, a power supply out there without having to hard wire anything which is which is pretty cool yeah so I'm loving it this is the EcoFlow is that the side with the name on it? it certainly is the EcoFlow Delta there is several other models wherever you live in the world take a look down there there's some links might be able to find out a bit more information see how much they cost where you live that sort of thing and for a lot of people these are worth their weight in gold thanks for watching everybody if you haven't subscribed please consider doing that next week we'll be back to a regular tool review rather than a giant battery review <laughs> but I've done a lot of battery reviews on this channel as well so that fits in quite nicely Thanks for watching, and I'll see you on another one next week. Cheers, guys.